Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, check if array is sorted and rotated. So before we get into this problem today, I wanna mention a couple quick things. Even though this is an easy problem, there's another easy problem that I would solve before you solve this one. And depending on what order like these problems are gonna be, like released on in terms of like the daily problems. Maybe yesterday's problem was the one that I'm already talking about. And in case you're wondering how I know what the daily problems are gonna be in advance, I guess I'll just tell you guys at this point. If you are logged in and you go to the Leak Code homepage and you kind of just scroll through this feed, what you'll notice is that Leak Code releases editorials in this feed. And that kind of tells you which problem an editorial was released for. So I see that LeetCode just created these two editorials. I know that these are going to be the daily problems at some point. I just don't know exactly which day they're going to happen, but I know they're going to happen eventually. Um, the problem that I'm talking about, by the way, is this one, maximum ascending subarray sum. It's also an easy problem, and I think in some ways it makes today's problem like slightly easier. But anyways, I kind of just feel like I told a kid that Santa Claus isn't real. So I'm really sorry if I just like ruined the illusion of the daily problem for you. But anyways, we got a problem for us today. We're given an array that was originally sorted in non-decreasing order. That pretty much just means ascending order, but we could have duplicates. So that's why they use the word uh, non-decreasing rather than ascending. We could have some duplicates. Um, so I'll even just add a duplicate in this example. Let me just throw a five in there. So you can see if this is the array that we were given, that must mean that the original array looked like this. One, two, three, four, five, five. But what happened is the array was rotated. What that basically means is we cut the array in half at some point. So I think this point, and then we took this part of the array and then moved it over there. And so you can see that that kind of lines up with this part over here. And I guess I misspoke earlier. It's actually not guaranteed that we were given an array that was necessarily originally sorted. But our goal is to determine if it was or not. So uh, for example, just to be clear, with this array, we see that if we were to take this and then move it over there, yes, we would have had a sorted array. So for the first example, we would return true. But the second example is a bit more interesting. Let me draw that one down here. It's two, one, three, four. No matter how you slice it, this original array is not sorted. If we split it like this and then we move the two over there, it's still not sorted. If we take a this and then move it over there, well, it's definitely still not sorted. There really isn't any way to make this sorted. So for this example, we would end up returning false. So how do you go about solving a problem like this one? Well, first of all, I'm going to cover, I guess, at least one brute force way to implement this because this is an easy problem, but then I'll show you a more optimal way to implement this. And I would kind of argue that that optimal way is a little bit advanced for an easy problem, to be honest. It's not a lot of code. I just use a kind of technique that usually comes up more often in medium problems. So in terms of brute force, one possible brute force solution would just be uh, to check if the original array is sorted. And then pretty much what I talked about, then try every pivot. If the original array is not already sorted, try this pivot. That would mean creating a new array where these are the elements, and then we take three and then move it after that. So in other words, you could just pop this element from the beginning and move it to the end. Obviously, that would be an O of N operation, but even if you were to do it the other way, popping it from this side, which would technically be constant, moving it this way would still be a linear time operation. And either way, we are still going to have to scan through the entire array to determine if it's sorted in non-decreasing order. Anyways, that's one way. You pop this, you move it over there. Is it sorted? Nope. Pop this, move it over there. Is it sorted? Nope. Pop this, keep doing that. Pop this one. And then finally, we do end up with a sorted array. It should look something like that. So that's one way to do it. At each step, we are doing a linear time operation, and we are going to have at most n steps. So n squared is going to be the time complexity. Now, can we do better? Yes, we can. Let me show you at least one way that I thought of. There's probably multiple ways to solve this problem, though. I think the editorial had a different solution, but I kind of like my solution better. When you're dealing with rotated problems, one common technique is just to take the array itself and then concatenate it with itself. In other words, I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. I have the original array, 
and then I take the exact same elements and then I add them after that. So this is the second copy of the array and it's combined into a single array. Uh, this is kind of like the halfway point. So why exactly did I do that? Because now I can solve this problem kind of with a sliding window. Well, it's not technically a sliding window, but to me it feels like a sliding window problem because consider this, now I can do this. I can say, is this entire thing sorted? Nope. Okay, is this entire thing sorted? Nope. And just keep going like that and eventually I'll find this window over here, which is sorted. And at that point, I can return true. Okay, so that doesn't really look that much more efficient. Every window is of size n, so it looks like I'm still gonna be doing n squared steps in the worst case, but that's where the sliding window comes in. Why not do something like this? I'm gonna change colors, three, and then check the next guy, four. Okay, so far we're in non-decreasing order. Then five, okay, keep going, another five. That's okay if two adjacent elements are equal, that's perfectly fine, but then we see the one. One is smaller than five. So that tells us that, okay, we were so close. We had a length of four. If we could have just found a window of size n, which in this case is six, we would have been good, but we didn't find that. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna restart our window now from this element. Since it's a one, we have to throw away all of our previous work. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. Now we start at one and we look at two. So far, so good. Then we look at three, then we look at four, then we look at five, and then we look at this last five. We could keep going, but n is already equal to six. So this is how you know we found the solution and we can return true. So this is a perfectly working solution, but you can see it does require additional space. So technically we're creating a new data structure. It's gonna be linear time and linear space, but we actually don't need to create another data structure. This is where the advanced technique comes in, where technically these indices are this. And technically I want to have my eye pointer at the beginning and I do want it to traverse over this input. But if I was at an index over here, what would I do? These ones are pretty easy to deal with because I could just say, okay, I'm at index four. I could just reference the original array and see what is that index four in the original array. But when I get over here, I'm technically out of bounds of the original array, but it's actually a very easy fix. Just take the index and mod it by the length of the original array, which is half the length of the new array. So in other words, if I have my I index at eight, I just take eight and I mod it by six. That gives me two. And that tells me that this value is gonna be the same value at index two in the original array. And that is the case. So using this technique, we can actually eliminate the need to actually store these elements in memory. We already know they're the exact same elements that are over here anyway. So why should we store them? This way we get the uh, space complexity down to be constant. That's how this is gonna work. And to mention, I'm actually gonna be starting my eye pointer at index one, just because I want to compare this with the previous element. And I want to keep track of the contiguous count, the size of our window. I'm always gonna have the size of the window to at least be one because one element is technically in non-decreasing order. But when I make the first comparison, I'm gonna compare i with index i minus one. And if they're in non-decreasing order, then I can bump this up by one and it'll now be two. If I get to this point and I see, okay, now my window is no longer valid, I will reset the count back down to one so that we can start over from here and then compare these two together and then just keep going. Okay, so now let's code it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get the length of the input array nums. And then I'm gonna have my count variable. Like I said, I'm gonna set it to one initially. And then I'm gonna have my loop. I'm gonna loop starting from one all the way not to n, but actually two times n. This is how I'm kind of imitating having this array being concatenated with itself. So what we would want to do is something like this. If nums at index i minus one is less than or equal to the current number, then we can increment our count. Otherwise, we would reset it back down to be one. If we ever get to a case where the count is equal to n, then we can return true. Otherwise, out here, we would return false. 
Unfortunately, there are actually a couple bugs with this approach. Maybe you can point them out, but I'll just tell you what they are. First of all, we forgot here to do the modding because we might end up out of bounds two times n that doesn't exist in the original array. So that's why here we have to add the mod by n and same thing over here. Take this and mod it by n. The other bug, and this is more of an edge case, what if the array was of size one? Well, this loop would not execute. We don't even have a chance to return true. And even more than that, if n is equal to one, well, then we would want to return true no matter what. So here you could do something like this, n equal one, return true, or you could actually even just update the statement we have down here to be n is equal to one, then return true. Otherwise, this will return false, which is what we intended to do. So I'll run this now. You can see here it works. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. I'll see you soon.